Hi! In this series of short videos I'm going to show you how to compose a drum beat, a bass line and a chord sequence using the Ableton Push 2 controller in Live 10. First up, let's take a look at recording a drum loop using the drum rack. First thing to do is to select a MIDI track to add your drum rack to. Select Browse. It's worth exploring the packs you have installed. You can then use the preview which will allow you to hear the different loops and samples before loading into the drum rack. You can access further information about the packs using the help view. To access this, go to view and help view. Select packs. I want to create a house beat. After some research, I have decided to use the drum machine pack and the kit 909. When the drum rack has loaded, you can see all the cells in the bottom part of the pad lit up. This represents cells in the drum rack that has different audio samples loaded into them. Next, select the metronome and press play. You can adjust the tempo by using the tempo encoder. Press play again to stop when you are ready. We are going to take a look at two ways to record a drum loop, real-time playing and also sequencing. First, let's take a look at real-time playing by adding a kick to every beat of the bar. I want to record one bar loop. Hold down fixed length and select one bar. Ensure the fixed length is turned on by selecting the fixed length. I want to quantize as I record. I will hold down the Quantize option and select Record Quantize On. I have also selected 1 over 16th, which will quantize MIDI notes to the nearest semiquaver beat of the bar. It's worth noting that in Live 10, additional metronome options have been added. By selecting the drop down menu, you can access these. I want to select Enable Only when recording. I've selected a one bar count in, which will give me four clicks before recording begins. I will press Record and record my kick drum. Next, I will add a snare and a clap to beats 2 and 4. I want to double that loop, and I can do this by selecting a double loop. I want to add some snare fills in bar 4 and vary the velocities to create ghost notes. Select Layout View. The bottom right of the pad now shows the velocity grid. Select the snare in the drum rack, and then select the relevant velocity. You'll notice the dimmer the light shows, the weaker the velocity strength. By temporarily holding down the layout view, you're able to access the loop selector. This allows you to select which bar you'd like to have in the sequence of view. Be mindful which note value you have selected. In this case, I have selected 1 over 16th value, and each of the pad represents a semi-quaver. By selecting clip, you can see the MIDI information in the display. I want to loop around the last bar. By cropping the loop length to one bar, I can then select the loop position to bar 4. I will now add the snare fill into bar 4. Select the loop position to 1 and crop the length to 4 bars. I want to add hi hats next. I'll use the velocity grid to select the appropriate strength and I will use the repeat function to add the hi-hats to my beat. I can select repeat, select the note value I want to use, and then I'll press record whilst holding down the velocity pad. I want to put a slight swing on the hi-hat. By holding down quantize and increasing the swing amount by using the encoder above, I can select the quantize to apply the setting. OK, I want to save this now, so I'll go to File, Save Live Set As. I'll select my folder I want to save this in, give it a name, and then select Save. If I want to import all the samples I've used and put in my project that I've saved, I can go to Collect All and Save. Select which media files you would like to copy into your project 
and select OK. Now you have created a drum loop using the drum rack, let's take a look at adding some bass using the 32 powered melodic step sequencer. This is a new feature in Live 10. OK, let's add some bass. Select Add Track, scroll through your browser and select the required sound. I'm going to add some bass from the Synth Essential Pack. I'm going to select Empire Bass and Load. I want to take a moment to explain the 64 pad layout. All the coloured notes represents the root note of the scale at different octaves. If I select Scale, it shows me that the layout is in fourths and in the key of C major. Starting from the root note, you move up the scale by selecting the next cell to the right. To go to the fourth note of the scale, you move to the next row above and then move up another row to the seventh before finishing on the root note again an octave above. If you prefer to have the layout in thirds, you will start on the root and then move like so. The last available option is Sequence. This layout puts all notes of the octave scale on the same line. This layout is useful if you need a very large range of notes available because it has no duplicated notes, apart from the root. You can also change the direction of the scale layout to vertical or horizontal. In chromatic mode, the pad grid contains all notes. Notes that are in key are lit, while notes that are not in key are unlit. I'm going to record the bass part I have in mind. I will select Layout, then toggle through to select Sequencer and 32 notes. Once I've recorded my part, I'll use the Step Editor to edit any of the notes. Check that the fixed length and the record quantize are on. When I'm ready, I'll press Record. By selecting Clip, you can see the MIDI information you've just recorded. By selecting different notes, you can see that the different notes are highlighted. Right now, I want to delete the information that is on the first beat of the first bar. I can do this by deselecting the pad that is lit. I will then select the note I want to sequence by selecting it and pressing the first pad. By holding down the pad, I can adjust the start of the note I've entered and also the length of it. I'm going to adjust it so that it slightly overlaps the second note. This will provide a smoother bass tone. OK, I want to add a side chain compression and have the input selected to the drum loop I have created. To do this, I select Add Device, scroll through to the audio effects, and choose Glue Compressor. I can then select the sidechain input and take the input from the kit 909. In order to have only the kick activate the sidechain, select your EQ filter type to high cut filter. Then set the frequency of the sidechain signal that will trigger the compressor. To make this easier to hear and therefore more accurate, you can diagnose by selecting the headphone icon and muting the drum track. You should then be able to hear the sidechain input. I'm going to adjust the frequency so that it mainly detects the kick. I will adjust the threshold. This sets the input level at which the compression triggered by the kick will begin. I may need to make up the gain, but I shall deselect the sidechain listen and listen in context. I'm going to increase that, yes. So every time the kick is played, you can see that it's triggering the compressor. You can see the meter working 
quite hard there. This has made the bass line more rhythmical by having that pumping effect. Next, let's take a look at adding some harmonic interest. Okay, I want to add some harmonic interest. I'm going to add some guitar. To do this, I select Add Track, scroll through the sounds, scroll to Guitar, and select Ambi Reversible Guitar. Remember to check the fixed length and also the quantize option. I know what I'm going to record, so I'm going to do it in real time. I want to select Lydian mode so that I have the appropriate pitches for my piece. If I select Mix, I have access to my track volume. The two default send options are Reverb and Delay. By sending the guitar to both the Reverb and Delay option, this creates ambience and space. Next, I'm going to add a distortion pedal to the guitar track. Select Add Device, then Audio Effects. Scroll to Pedal. Pedal is a new device that has been added to the Live 10 update. Pedal is capable of a range of distortion sounds. I'm going to select the Little Drive preset and then press Load. I will solo the track and dial in my preferred settings using the encoders above. I want to insert some chords by using the sequencer. To do this, add track, scroll to the sounds category. I'm going to use the synth keys and I'll select the Achilles bells. This is a preset that opens in the wavetable, also a new device in Live 10. Next, select layout option and toggle to the sequencer and 32 pads and select clip. Select the notes in your chord, then select the note value and then place it on the sequencer above in the top part of the pad. To make it easier, I will solo and put the metronome on. I will place my first chord on the first beat of the first bar. I will then select the notes in my second chord and place this on the first beat of the third bar. I want my chords to be sustained, so I'm going to select legato. This will extend all the MIDI notes to the beginning of the next note. Lastly, I want to create some sonic interest by automating some of the parameters in the wavetable device. By using the ribbon controller, you can automate the modulation on both the wavetable position and oscillator effect. Select the automate button, and when you are ready to record your automation, press record. of videos we'll take a look at developing the composition using the arrangement view. The arrangement view is particularly useful for structuring your composition to the timeline. We'll also look at adding further interest to the composition such as a melody line, some vocal parts and some textures.